Hi guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, I'll be giving you my second impression of this lovely Arduino Opta PLC. Uh, I did, uh, I say second impression because I did review the thing a year ago and uh, it was not great. I hated it and never really used it. And so now I figured, you know what? I like the Arduino brand. I like the Finder or Finder relays. Let's give this thing a go properly and try and see what we can do. So um, I've done I've done a bunch of research. I've eventually used the PLC IDE um, and I've actually been able to download a program to it, which was painful. So I'm just going to brief quick video and touch on what my second impressions are of this Arduino Opta a year later. And I guess uh, I did a short like, you know, two, a, f a few days ago where I said, look, I wouldn't buy it. And I think my opinion has kind of changed now. It's like, I can't remember what I paid for this, but I think it's like 130 quid on Amazon. And it's probably worth it, you know, considering the 1200 Siemens PLC is 250. And the logo doesn't quite have the same amount of features as in the Siemens PLC logo as the Opta. Um, I, I I think I'd, I, I'd rec I could recommend this. I was talking to a guy at work today um, and I said to him, look, you know, I think you should buy it. It's got an STM32 chip inside there. Pretty powerful processor, and yeah, I think I think it's worth it. So let's touch on some uh, some points. I think there's two ways to program this. You can program it using using the old Arduino IDE, the the original one that everyone's used, you know, for all the Unos and whatnot and Nanos, or you can program it using the new PLC uh, IDE. The PLC IDE, it's doable. Like you can manage to do it, but it is terrible. Like they need to put a hell of a lot of work into it. I mean. It's like, it's packed full of features. It it kind of like, um, there's windows all over the place. It, it almost feels like Tia Portal. Tia Portal's a bit, uh, you know, packed full of features. It's kind of what you'd expect from like a, a solid works Tia Portal, just like features everywhere sort of thing. What I found is that the PLC IDE just doesn't have as many features at all. And I would, when you look at like the documentation for this thing, it's, they got an amazing doc, do, uh, uh, document. They got two amazing documents actually, and I would recommend reading them. They're they're actually pretty good. Um, so you look at the documentation, and it just tells you how to program it using the original IDE and not using the PLC one. So I think what they did was when I bought this a year ago, they released the PLC and they didn't release the software, which is crazy. So they had the PLC for this, and you couldn't program it in Ladder or FBD. A functional block diagram or sequential function charts none of that st structured text you had to program it in the old ide so then all the documentation and all the tutorials and whatnot were written in the old ide and now a year later there's like nothing for the plc ide so uh, you know it was painful i was trying to talk to chat gpt and ask it for advice and chat gpt did not have a clue as well so yeah anyways it was, it was painful one of the things i found interesting is the finder or finder i think it's called finder but yeah, the people, so Arduino do the, I don't think even Arduino do the software, but Arduino do the software and the, and the um, you know, the 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 electronics. But it's Finder or Finder, they, they specialize in hardware and relays. So obviously Arduino have part, part, uh, partnered with Finder and um, I'm going to call them Finder because Finder just sounds weird. I don't, I don't speak German. Uh, so the Finder website, they mentioned this thing. So this is the Opta... They have like three variants. Um, I've got the Wi-Fi one, which is the most pro advanced variant, whatever it is. And their website mentions it as a programmable logic relay, which I find interesting. So they didn't call it a controller. They called it a relay. Obviously, Arduino called this a controller, a PLC. Uh, but Finder called it a, a relay, which I found interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, I found the manual for the PLC ID. That was pretty good. Uh, so you open up the ID, you go to help and then uh, index, I think it is. And that brings up a really nice uh, manual for the ID. And that was helpful to some degree. Um, going online with this thing was a, a pain in the ass. So literally, I, I had it plugged in like this. So I've got a USB-C cable here. I had it just plugged in with just the Ethernet into a switch. And it would not go online. I couldn't download it to it, couldn't go online with it. Um, it came with its own... Uh, no, okay, there was no way to set its IP, so I had to go into my router settings, you know, from my ISP, and then give it a static, and then after doing that, it turns out that apparently, uh, I've got like version 1.06 of the PLC ID, that might be right, I might have made those numbers up, this was yesterday at this point, um, but... Uh, I've got that version of the IDE and it turns out the older versions of the IDE you could program it via the Ethernet port 
but now you have to stick this thing in, which I, I think is just crazy. And I was actually scared because I've got 24 volts coming into the input here. And I was thinking, is this thing going to uh, stick 24 volts into my USB? So eventually I, I plugged it in and uh, it was fine. I, tr I did try to see documentation to see if I've got 24 there, will it put, will, will it link the file files together and put um, 24 into my USB? But thankfully it didn't. So after spending an hour messing about trying to program it by, by the RJ45 Ethernet port, Gave up on that, unplugged the thing, and plugged it directly in via USB-C. And then that took me another hour to get online. And one of the crazy things is that the Arduino ID, it seems like it's not free. So I think you, you download it for free, and then you have to activate a license. And so you buy this hardware, and it has a license on it. So then there's, there's, there's like the Arduino port enter thing. I think you need to buy a license for that. But... This thing has a license on it, but you have to activate it. So yeah, it's just ridiculous. So eventually you end, you activate the license. And then because there's two ways to program this thing, the old IDE or the new PLC IDE, you have to download the firmware bootloader sort of thing to then decide which way you want to download it. So if you're in the, the old IDE, you have to download the firmware sort of thing to it first, and then you can program it. And same, if you're on a PLC ID, you have to download the firmware to it first, and then you can program it. Which, like, just come on, that's just ridiculous. Like, either just have both firmware on there, or, you know, just when I when I, when I I write my PLC code and I do my ladder logic, just download the firmware at that point. Why do I have to do it first? So, anyways, two, 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 over, a bit, over two hours, I, was, I eventually managed to connect, get online. Um, I've been using it now for about four or five hours, and I still haven't figured out how to actually look at my I.O., so I've got 24 volts coming in here into input one, and I I want to see like the the 1200 here. I've got LEDs that show up. So right now I'm um, hitting you know these buttons here. So I've got LEDs that will show up. So I know when the inputs on or off, and I just don't have that here. There's just there's no LEDs. So I mean like that's just yeah. I, I, there are so many of these there, but I think that might be Modbus. And then these don't actually turn on when the output's on. So these might be programmable. I know that this button's programmable, which that, that's pretty cool. This button here, it's a user button, so you can press it. But you can program it to do whatever you want, which I found pretty cool. So I could actually program this to say, if I hold it down for 10 seconds, then turn on all the outputs. Or if I hold it down for 15 seconds, then enter a different state and allow me to um i don't know if i help if i press if i press it twice turn on two inputs if i press it four times turn on four inputs it's programmable which i, I find that cool you know i've never seen a plc with a, a button on the front that's actually programmable like that um yeah so one thing i found insane which i think more plc should do this is this 1200 here these are all digital inputs right so i've got digital input one through to seven so i've got eight or zero through to seven so i've got eight digital inputs and then i've got two analog inputs here on the arduino opta i have i one two three four five six seven eight so i've got eight inputs but they are digital or analog which is crazy so these inputs can be digital or analog which is just like that blew my mind i haven't tested it yet so um, I'm quoting the manual here, uh, but that's bloody exciting. And then secondly, the fact that it has dedicated Modbus ports. So, you know, the RS-485, uh, the free wire configuration. The fact it has that dedicated whilst, you know, comparing it to my 1200 here, I have to buy a Modbus adapter of some sorts, I think. Um, I can't remember actually how you do it on a 1200, but definitely like on the ET200SP and the, the higher model, you have to buy this big 250 pound module or whatever and that just comes just the, the ports there so again you know i was very anti this thing originally and it's grown on me it is definitely growing on me you know now they've just released the expansion modules which um i'm not gonna buy yet until i until i'm sold on this thing so but once i'm sold on it i will buy the additional uh, expansion modules I, I reckon uh this thing also has bluetooth so i've got the wi-fi and bluetooth version I don't really see the point in Bluetooth, but apparently it's it's good that the what the manual says, and again, this it uses the older IDE, so I don't know if I'll get around to testing this, but you can go on your phone and then you can actually turn on and off inputs and control the PLC. 
via your phone using Bluetooth. Mm, bit maybe gimmicky, but I guess it's just the fact that Arduino, Arduinos generally, you could use them via Bluetooth. And so um, I guess they've just allowed those libraries to be, just be easily ported over into the PLC. So I don't know if this is true, but one thing I've heard people mention is that because it's an Arduino, the way that they've done it is that all of what you was able to do on all your previous Arduinos, you can now use that same code on here, which is maybe interesting. I'm not sure. Um, I am pretty excited for the Wi-Fi. I think this is a bit insane. So this thing's got Wi-Fi. Uh, I can connect it. I don't know how to do this in the PLC IDE, but I can do this in two seconds in the old IDE. Um, I can give it my uh, Wi-Fi SSID, so my Wi-Fi ID and my Wi-Fi password, put that onto here, and in no wires, right? So I can literally unplug this Ethernet cable, yeah? Unplug the USB-C as well. And then this thing can connect to the internet and then I can get it to call APIs, I can get it to look at the weather, I can get it to look at my location data from my phone, which is insane. Like, obviously, there's, you've, got safe, you've got safety or cybersecurity issues with, with being on the internet, but the fact that that just over Wi-Fi, just, you know, in this little thing here, just connects to the internet. Um, I'd like to play around with that. And I'm thinking maybe if I have it so that the Wi-Fi... Um, I call an API and then, you know, over Modbus or something, I then pass that information to the PLC so that that way, like, to the, to, sorry, to the 1200 PLC. So then these two are communicating, but this one's not on the internet and this one's controlling stuff, whilst this one's just on the internet. I was thinking, yeah, something like that. So I'm, I'm quite excited to play around with the Wi-Fi uh, features. And um, yeah, I think, to be honest with you, uh, oh, actually, sorry, yeah, one last thing. I was like, there's definitely one more thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, this is insane as well. So obviously microcontrollers, this, inside here you've got an STM32. But um, here, these some of these inputs, not, I think not all of them, but I think maybe five out of eight of them, you can use uh, the microcontrollers interrupts on the inputs, which is pretty cool. So um, the interrupt service routine, uh, I think that's what it's called, interrupt service routine, ISR. I think that's what it's called. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, you can program these as inputs. So then, obviously, this isn't a safety PLC, so you wouldn't really do safety stuff. But the fact that you can just say, when this input goes high, then just stop everything that you're doing and go do this, I found interesting. And when I was... I, I, so I have programmed this thing, and I'll show you the program that... or well, I'll do you a quick demo for you. Um, but what I find interesting is when you when you add blocks to the PLC it will ask you, do you want to create this block as a fast block, a slow block, a background block, or one other type of block. So it's interesting that maybe it might be an interrupt. So it's interesting that the features that I have in Tier Portal where I can set up different OB cyclic interrupts, um, and I could declare, like, I could determine how often that uh, block runs. I can almost do the same thing on here and declare certain blocks as slow or fast or background. That's quite feature heavy. So... Yeah, I mean, I might, I might have just sold myself on the Arduino. I think, I think it's a pretty cool thing. So, anyways, let me show you. So, what I've, what I've got here is I've got my power supply. I have here two volts on this input, so I'm just going to plug it into here. Uh, so this is going into the supply side of my relay. Da -da -da. And I, it's two volts because I don't have any sort of output to drive other than this little mini DC motor. And so if I put something higher than two volts, it's going to blow. So, and then the positive side of my little motor going into the output of my relay. So what I've done is I've written a, I've written a simple program on, um, on the Arduino that just says, if you get the input one, then turn on your, the relay for, uh, I, uh, Q1 and Q2, or I think Arduino, instead of using Q as like is industry standard, They've used O, so output one, output two. So I've got it. You see the you see the supply on input one, then turn on uh, um, output one and output two. So if I turn on my two volt power supply, this thing is currently not spinning. There oh, it is. Okay, so this now spins. There you go, like so. If I remove the 24 volts from input one, 
turns off, turns on, off. So it's a shame there are no LEDs. There's no LEDs for input or output. I, I'm guessing these are programmable, so I can actually, I guess, just program them, but so it'd, just, it'd just be much nice. It'd be really nice if you just had this layout here where you can see each individual input because the amount of times like I've been on site and you want to see if the input's on, you don't want to have to go find the HMI if you're inside the panel and you don't want to have to go upstairs to the HMI or whatever. Just, I want to be able to just say, hey, you know, Matt, is input one on? And here you've just got no way of telling. So anyways, yeah, this is my program now, right? Uh, that I wrote very simple lad logic one and it's just not it's nice to be able to program I, I never thought you could program an arduino using ladder logic it's pretty cool so yeah that's it for me second second impressions of this thing uh what would i rate it i mean yeah i'll just say get one get one you know it's cheap enough and i think we should support arduino in their in their journey for this i think i think it's worth it you know uh the fact that like you know, Siemens and Alan Bradley have a monopoly. I, that doesn't sit well with me. And um, I've got a Raspberry Pi here for that reason because I just want to use more, like Cotis. I'm like desperate to use Cotis. I've downloaded OpenPLC. I'm desperate to use like, is it OpenPLC? Yeah. Um, anyways, we should, we should support this kind of stuff. And cheap hardware with free software without paying 1800 pound licenses and the rest of this crap. I think we should support it, so. Yeah, I would recommend that we buy this beautiful Opta. Second impressions, I'm kind of happy with it so far. Nice one. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.